So let's talk about meteors, chondrites, and the solar system. It was a natural progression of radiometric dating to test all sorts of rocks. And it turns out that the oldest rocks on Earth aren't actually from Earth. They're meteors, and not only any type of meteor, because there are a number of different types of meteorites. In particular, chondrites. Chondrites are primordial rocks. They're meteorites that fall to Earth, but they're not the usual metallic meteorites. They're stony. The elements and minerals in a chondrite are representative, actually, of the composition of our solar system. And that's because they're the building blocks of our solar system. They came right from the beginning when our solar system was forming, before the planets existed, when all that was here was a protoplanetary disk of dust and grit. And slowly that dust and grit came together by the force of gravity and started to accrete into larger and larger chunks, asteroids, and the beginnings of planets. So the chondrites that we find on Earth can tell us a lot about the early time of our solar system. Interestingly, Claire Patterson in the 1950s studied the ages of chondrites, and they're all very consistent. None are really older than 4.566 billion years, to a reasonably good precision. And given that these are the oldest sort of building blocks, these they're the sort of Legos of our solar system, given that, we know that the Earth can't be older than those because that's kind of part of what the Earth's made of. So that puts an upper limit on the age of Earth at 4.5 roughly billion years. So the age of chondrites at just a bit more than 4.5 billion years puts an upper limit on the age of Earth and geochemical evidence sort of suggests that asteroids and chondrites accreted just after the solar system formed. That would have made a kind of proto-Earth, uh, a big glob of conjoined asteroids and meteorites that are all smashed together. It was a very different place than the Earth we know today. The sheer energy of asteroids bombarding this proto-planet would have created so much extra energy that the Earth would have been much hotter than it is today, inside and on the surface, because volcanism dominated this eon, which is called the Hadean. It's really proof, in fact, that Hutton's uniformitarianism wasn't quite right, because, in fact, the Earth hasn't always undergone the same processes. It has changed, because at its very beginning, it was an unlivable place. The way is that finding the age of the Earth was an extraordinary scientific process. And by finding this age, you can't help but take into account the fact that Earth is a planet in a solar system. And that's kind of a wondrous perspective, I think.